Hey everybody, this is Kevin Wallace, Double CCA and Cisco Press author. And in this video, we wanna take a look at how to set up port redirection on a Cisco router. And we're gonna do that using the command line interface. Yes, I know we could use a graphical interface like Cisco Configuration Professional, but I'm a CLI guy. We're gonna take a look at doing it that way. I actually had to do this the other day. A network that I support, they had their router go down and I ordered a new one to come in the next day from Amazon, but in the meantime, I thought they need to be up now. So I went and I grabbed a, a 2911 router out of my rack and I installed that and I thought this will serve as their internet router. And what it needed to do was, well, first of all, it needed to get an IP address via DHCP from the service provider. So they only had one globally routable IP address. They were connected via a cable modem, but that router, it also served as a DHCP server for their network. So it was handing out IP addresses to all the inside clients. And beyond that, they had a server on the inside of the network that needed to be accessed by accountants. Uh, it was, uh, they accessed it via remote desktop protocol, the accounting company did, and they needed the accounting people to be able to come in and access that. So that required a port redirection configuration. And it occurred to me as I was setting all that up, you know, I don't think I've ever done a video on port redirection. So that's what we're gonna do here. Specifically, we're gonna have a really basic topology. We'll go out to a live interface in just a moment. And we're gonna have a Cisco router acting as a server. And I've got secure shell set up on that. So we should be able to SSH into that quote unquote server. Again, it's just a, a Cisco router. But what we wanna do is configure port redirection on the customer router, the router sitting at the internet boundary, so that we can then go out to the internet, do a secure shell into the inside global address. That's the IP address that the customer router will have learned from the ISP via DHCP. And if we secure shell to that one and only one publicly routable IP address that the customer router has learned, it should redirect us, it should redirect that SSH attempt to that internal server, and we should get a login prompt from that internal server. So let's go out to a live interface and set up port redirection, and also we're gonna be setting up port address translation, and we'll also set up the router to act as a DHCP server. Here's what we wanna do on this configuration. I've got a customer router. We're pretending this is a newly installed router. So if I do a show IP interface brief command, we're gonna see that it doesn't have any IP addresses assigned. And we've got an internal server with an IP address of 10.10.1.100, and it's gonna be accessible via secure shell. What we wanna be able to do at the end of this demo is to go out to the internet, go out to a device on what we're calling the internet and do a secure shell to whatever IP address is assigned to this customer router via DHCP. This customer router is gonna learn its IP address via DHCP from the internet service provider. We wanna be able to do a secure shell to that IP address that we call the inside global address because it represents a device on the inside of the network and global means that it's globally routable. It's a good address. It's not a private IP address. And we want the customer router to see that incoming secure shell request and say, oh, somebody wants to talk via secure shell on port 22 specifically, TCP port 22. What we're gonna do is forward that port onto port 22 of the server that's running secure shell. Now in this topology, the server is actually another Cisco router. I'll show it to you. We've got it set up to use secure shell, but it's just another Cisco router. And as part of the configuration, we'll want to set up port address translation where the inside devices on the inside of my network that have private IP addresses, they can be translated into that one inside global address that we're going to be assigned from the ISP. And we'll also want to set up a DHCP pool so that they can obtain IP addresses. Well, let's get started. We see that the customer router currently has no IP addresses. Let's change that. Let's go into global configuration mode and we'll say, gigabit zero slash two. This is my internet facing interface, by the way. And we'll say IP address DHCP. And we'll do a no shutdown to bring that administratively up. Let's go into interface gigabit zero slash one and we'll statically set its IP address. Oh, look at this. We just learned an IP address on our internet facing interface. Here is the IP address. So again, at the end of this demo, we want to be able to go to the internet, do a secure shell to that IP address, and have that secure shell session redirected to the inside device that's acting as a secure shell server. But here, we're still on the inside interface. Let's assign an IP address. We'll say IP address, and it's going to be 10.10.1.1 .1 .1 with a 16-bit subnet mask. 
Let's do a no shut to bring it up. Now let's take a look and see if we have any IP address assignments. I'll do once again a show IP interface brief command. Great news. We've got an IP address for our inside interface and for the outside interface. And the outside interface was learned via DHCP. Excellent. Now let's set up the customer router to be a DHCP server for this inside network so it can hand out IP addresses. First, before I create the pool of IP addresses, I want to exclude a couple of addresses. For one thing, I don't want to hand out the router's IP address. I don't want to hand this out. And I also don't want to hand out the IP address of my secure shell server, 10.10.1.100. So I'm going to exclude those IP addresses from being handed out. Here's how we would set that up. Let's go back into global configuration mode and I'll say IP DHCP excluded hyphen address. And we can give a range. I could give a starting IP address, a space, and then an ending IP address. And every IP address in that range will be excluded. But if I just want to exclude a single IP address, I can just put in that single IP address. I want to exclude 10.10.1.1. And I also want to exclude 10.10.1.100. Now, let's create that DHCP pool. I'll call it site one. Let's say IP DHCP pool. I'll give it a name of site one. And now I can specify what network we're gonna be using to hand out IP addresses. I'll say network 10.10.0.0. We've got a 16-bit subnet mask. Who's the default router or the default gateway? We'll say default hyphen router. And it's gonna be me, the customer router with an IP address of 10.10.1.1 for the DNS server. I like to specify the Google DNS servers, the publicly available servers of 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. And we've now configured this customer router as a DHCP server. Now, let's set up port address translation, where it can translate these private IP addresses in the 10.10.0.0 slash 16 network. We want to be able to translate those into that one publicly writable address of 203.0.113.101. And the way we can keep all those different sessions separate using port address translation is we keep track of the port numbers. So the first thing we need to do to set up port address translation is to define these interfaces as being inside interfaces or outside interfaces. I'm going to go into interface gigabit 0 slash 1 and I'm going to say IP NAT inside. It's my inside interface. Let's go into interface gigabit 0 slash 2 now and we'll say IP NAT outside. Now that I've defined the inside and the outside, let's create an access control list, an ACL that is going to match. We're not using this ACL to permit or deny traffic. We're using it to match traffic. Let's create an ACL to match every IP address on this inside network, every IP address in the 10.10.0.0 slash 16 network. To do that, I'll just create a standard access list. I'll say access hyphen list one. And I'm going to say permit, but remember, this is not permitting or denying traffic. We can also use an access list to match traffic. That's what we're doing here. I want to permit or match 10.10.0.0. And with an ACL, we don't specify the subnet mask. We specify the wildcard mask, which will be 0.0.255.255. .0 .0 We've now matched all of our inside IP addresses. What we want to do now is to give an instruction that we want to translate those what are called inside local addresses. They represent devices on the inside of the network. And local means that the IP addresses are locally significant. They're not globally routable. Let's translate those inside local addresses to our one and only inside global address. Again, inside global means that it represents a device on the inside of the network, but it's globally routable. To do that with only a single IP address that we're using for the inside global address, we have to do what's called NAT overloading or port address translation. Here's how we set that up. I can say IP NAT inside source. This is going to specify the IP addresses on the inside of my network. It's going to be all IP addresses matching list one. In other words, access control list number one. And we're going to translate that into whatever the IP address is of interface gigabit 0 slash 2 and we'll say overload to allow multiple inside local addresses to be translated into the single inside global address. We've now set up port address translation. We've set up a DHCP server. There's one thing left to do though and that is to set up port redirection which was the main purpose of this video. I want to say any secure shell connection coming into this customer router from the internet, I want to redirect that 
over to my server that's running Secure Shell, which is at IP address 10.10.1.100. Here's how we do that. It's another IP NAT inside command. I'm going to say IP NAT inside source, but this time the source is not an access control list. It's going to be a static IP address that I specify using a static port number. I'm going to say static instead of list. And I want to send secure shell traffic to TCP port 22 for IP address 10.10.1.100. So I'll say TCP, and I'll give the IP address of 10.10.1.100. That's my server running secure shell. I'll say 22, that's the uh, TCP port that secure shell uses. So that's the inside host and port. For the outside information, I'll specify interface gigabit 0 slash 2. Again, on port 22, we're saying if I get a secure shell connection, in other words, TCP port 22, coming in on interface gigabit 0 slash 2, I'm going to redirect that to port 22. I'm not going to change the port numbers. I'm going to redirect that to port 22 and send it to 10.10.1.100, which is my server running secure shell. Let's see if it works. First, let's just double check our configuration. I'll do a show IP NAT translations command and we can see that I've got a static translation in place. Notice this is an inside global address. It represents a device on the inside of my network, my server, but this is a globally routable IP address. That's the reason it says inside global. That corresponds to my inside local of 10.10.1.100. Inside means it's a device on the inside of my network. Local means that it's locally significant. It's not globally routable. This is a private IP address. But if we come in on this port number, the port number used by Secure Shell, we're going to forward it to this inside local address on the same port number. Let's go to a device out on the internet. Let's go to my ISP router as an example. And here's how I can do a Secure Shell, by the way, from a Cisco router. I can say SSH space minus L. And after that, I give the username that I'm using to log in. I've got a username password combination on my server of Cisco Cisco. So I'll say a username is Cisco. And I want to go to the inside global address. This is the IP address that was learned via DHCP. I want to go to 203.0.113.101. That's the IP address that I'll learn via DHCP. And when I try to secure shell there, it's going to do a port redirection. And it says, what's your password? My password is Cisco. And look at that. I'm sitting on the secure shell server. And that's how we can set up port redirection. And we threw in a couple of bonuses there. We showed you how to get an IP address from a DHCP server, how to set up a DHCP pool, and how to configure port address translation. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please click on subscribe below so you don't miss any of our future content.